Good day and welcome to our Friday show on the mark. Myself and Shahil, we're going to go through the card as best as we can, as usual. Hopefully you find a couple of winners and uh, hopefully you have a good day's racing. Let's start off with race one. It is a 14.50. It's a 0.20 rating. Shell never easy to find winners in these 0.20s. Uh, you're telling me that Mr. Santos drummed in, gave a bank in this race, uh, Enzo Borrego. He, he looks like the right horse. I just can't understand why they've removed the blinkers on him. Probably last time, um, yeah, I, I backed him last time and I always thought he was going to get past Dark Horse, but obviously Dark Horse was f superior in that class. Probably that's why they removed the blinkers. Um, he's still a young horse. He's working well, like you mentioned on Wednesday. He's drawn one, so let's see this time because I don't see any Dark Horse in this field. Yeah, obviously the, there's sort of a big difference in the draw. Last time he was drawn nine, they rushed him up there. He sat up second most of the way and uh, well, Dark Force was just too good for him at the end of the day. Uh, he's drawn one, obviously he's going to be in a lot better position. I'm just a little bit worried of the fact that they've removed those blinkers because like I said on Wednesday, his form really has improved since they put on the blinkers. Three runs with the blinkers, uh, three very good runs. Um, but anyway, like, like Shahil says, he's still a young horse. Maybe it won't make too much of a difference as far as Enzo Barrega is concerned. Valorin, he's been a ultra consistent, especially in this class of 0-20. Once again, I think he'll run a decent race. He is drawn seven, but um, he's a sort of horse that comes from off the, f off the pace. I don't think that's too much of a problem, the draw. Yeah, even I like him too. Like you said, he's been very reliable, very consistent. Um, draw seven won't matter because look at his his uh, draws eight, nine, ten. He's always right there. He's, he's going to be there once again. And then for third, probably Romanus. Um, his last two has been disappointing. I'm not a big fan of him, I must say. But um, he looks fit and well. Um, he should be running on in the top three or top four. Yeah, I like Indian Tractor for my third place. I thought that was a good run behind Master Spain. Remember, that was in a 0.26 last time. He's got a decent draw. Uh, that'll be my trifecta. I'm going to go Anza Borrego, Valerin, and uh, Indian Tractor. I'm going to go Anza Borrego, Valerin, and Romanus. Okay, let's move on to the second race, 1400 meter benchmark 31. And uh, geez, I, I don't know when this horse is going to win till dawn. You know, I've written down here, he's got an awkward rating. He's been stuck on that 28, 29 rating. Not good enough, well, uh, not sort of down enough to run in the 0 26. And uh, he's always sort of stuck in this rating, but uh, he's run some good races. There was a good run behind Iron Wolf last time. He has to be fit by now, Shail. He's had uh, how many runs yeah. this season? He's had three runs this season. He has to be sort of uh, uh, ready to win by now. Uh, he's got a bit of a tough draw to deal with as well. Uh, he'll probably be my first choice, but he wouldn't be a banker by any stretch for the imagination. I suppose you've got to respect Watch Me Dad as well. I see he is the favorite. Yeah. He's, I, I think he's better than his last run. He's drawn two. He'll probably be a little bit closer. Uh, I don't know what you think about Watch Me Dad. I think it's a match race between the 6 and the 10, but I'm, I'm slight, slightly edged out with Watch Me Dad just because of the draw. It's never easy to come from gate 9 on 1400 meters. Watch Me Dad, uh, I think he got beaten tactically last time by Royal Resolution um, when Imran made that move. Uh, so he just couldn't go with him, and in the final stretch, he was already two lengths clear. He still uh, ran on strongly. He's back after a little break. I do believe Watch Me Dad is the horse to beat. Like you said, Till Dawn, um, very reliable and consistent sort. He also couldn't get past Iron Wolf last time, so hopefully this time um, he He's not too far back, so it's a bit of a match race between these two. Yeah, I agree. And uh, what would your third? My mine would be Badawi. I like those. Uh, I mean, he's beaten Watch Me Dad, although it was over a lot shorter. But uh, obviously, I think the 1400 will obviously suit Watch Me Dad a lot better than Badawi. But Badawi, uh, when he does get to the front and he settles, he does run a fairly decent races. A good run behind Play Another Tune, even though he did get beat six and three quarter lengths. Remember, Play Another Tune is a decent horse. And then uh, a good run last time behind that, decent horse, good buddy. So, uh, Badawi, would you would you put him down as your third choice? Actually, uh, go with number two, the newcomer, Tipu Tip. He's got a lot of work under the belt, this horse. Um, he's a South African form, he's got two wins, and look at the odds that he won. He won at 28 to one, 71 to 20. So he's, he's not expected to go well tomorrow, but he can run into the places for sure. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, some of these horses that do go over ground, they do run well first time up, so they, he could be uh, uh, worthwhile keeping an eye on. Right, race three, 1500 meter benchmark 36. I've always told you I've rated this horse Captain Gone Wild. I think he'll win again. I honestly believe that he's a lot better than this rating. Uh, he's probably probably got another two, three wins before he gets to his sort of ceiling. And uh, I, I think that uh, he'll probably, he'll most likely want to lead you again, although there is Iron Wolf in the race. Iron Wolf's drawn nine. I think that uh, this horse will probably, uh, he's quick, this horse, uh, uh, Captain Gone Wild. He, he pings the gates and, he, and he's gone, you know. Uh, last time, drawn nine, jumped out, led easily, won easily. Uh, I, I think did Zen Zero come out and won yes, again? last week. Yeah, so that form has been up, uh, is, is been held. So Captain Gone Wild, 
Jami Aliasan apparently rides him every morning, so he knows him pretty well. And uh, I think I'm going to make him my first choice. I don't know if you agree with me on those sentiments. No, I've got a question for you, actually. Do you think he <laughs> has to lead you to win? No, I don't think so. Um, I, d I think, in fact, I'd like to see him actually sit in um, uh, the source. But, uh, you know, when they're too good, like he yeah, was last time, I don't know if you remember me saying, even from the bad draw, yeah. he can jump, he can yeah. lead, and, and uh, he, he'll probably go on and win, which he did. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, if he doesn't lead... I don't think he has to lead. I think he's just a, he's a little bit more superior than than than, than this field. Uh, Blowing the box. I don't know how many more chances. I'm, I've uh, you know change stable. Sometimes they say a change is as good as a holiday. Tongue tie for the first time. He's got the blinkers on. He's drawn two new stable. That could change the mind of blowing the box. Box, yeah. Um, exactly what I said. But I, I like no, this number seven. You know how much I like this Al Sakra. He's drawn one. Um, he's in his two races. He hasn't been able to lead yet. I am hoping that probably tomorrow he will get to the front. And once he's up front, he's a tough horse to catch. So I'm going to go probably with Al Sakra as my value bit of the day for tomorrow. And for second, definitely Captain Gone Wild. Like you said, if, if he can follow and fire, he's going to be the biggest danger to Al Sakra. And then for for definitely blowing the box and um, like you said a change is as good as a holiday for him Cedric Sejour and uh, Jean-Michel Henry has just had a winner for quite some time now so let's see how he goes yeah what about your horse Iron Wolf you always rate this horse and uh, you're giving him a miss this week yeah because there's already Captain Gun Wilder and Sakura I think he's a front runner too and I don't think he can lead this time okay I, don't, I think it's going to be tough from that draw 9 yeah. to lead as well yeah alright race 4 it's a 1400 meter benchmark 51 and um, I particularly like uh, number three, Hastine. I'll tell you why I like him. I didn't like the way he was striding out in, in his work last time. I thought he looked a little bit unsound as far as I was concerned. Striding out much better in the, in the training. And uh, I, I definitely think that he's going to have a big, big chance here. Hastine, that was a good win. Well, he's, he's run second to Waltag. Then it was a good win. I wasn't particularly happy with his soundness last time. Like I said, he's looking a lot sounder, Hastings. So I'm going to put him down as my first choice. Virtue, he was one of my horses on Wednesday morning as far as training was concerned. Unfortunately, he's pulled a bad draw. Uh, he's working while he is two and a half kilograms better off with Hastings. So just keep that in, in mind. But unfortunately, poor draw. And then obviously this three-year-old Sinatra. Oh, it's not three-year-old anymore. He's just turned four last week. Uh, they they, they sort of put him in, in quite high regard. There was a decent run behind Good Buddy, although I thought he'd run a little bit better yeah. than, than, than uh, four lengths behind Good Buddy. But he's getting better with racing. Uh, he's, a very, he's quite a naughty horse. He's always on his back legs and, and, and uh, he, he's still very, very immature. But obviously, as racing goes along, he'll get better. And they've tried the blink. Well, they're trying the blinkers on him for the first time. I don't know if you remember his barrier trial. It was quite yeah. a decent barrier trial. With yeah, the that's exactly why I liked him. Um, the blinkers looks to be, uh, he looks to be appreciating that equipment. I have watched an interview with Sudeshi Salan. He says that the house is like mind-blowing, which he has put the blinkers. It has worked. So let's hope it works on Sanatla. He's a very decent animal. He's uh, run second to Twist of Fate, which which, by the way, I think I saw yesterday has been crowned the Cape uh, champion, three-year-old champion, so well done to him. So I'm going to go with Sanatla, actually, um, to beat Hastin. Like you said, ignore his last run, probably was not striding out at track work. He can bounce back here. He has won in this class and distance before. And then Virtue, he can make his own pace or come from the back. And you mentioned him on Wednesday. He's been working well. So let's yeah. see how they go. It's probably Sanatla, Hastin and Virtue for the top three. Yeah, I'll go with the same, the same three. Probably not in that order. I like the way Hastin's been working lately. So I'm going to put him in as my first place. But I am expecting a much better performance from Sanatla, especially with those blinkers. So keep that in mind right race five it is a 1600 meter benchmark 56 and uh, we were talking about virtue but uh, he worked alongside titsi comma dance on on when on tuesday morning and both of them put up some decent work he's drawn one obviously the mile in my opinion is going to suit him a lot better than the 1400 last time i like this horse i don't know if you remember he went off at uh, what, what is it, about almost six to one uh, I, I don't know what price is he tomorrow shall you know 600 same, it's more, or, more or less the same price. But I'm not making him my first choice. Uh, he was a little bit more. He was a little bit too disappointing yeah. uh, for me last time. I really thought he was going to run a cracker, but I think he's going to run a better race this time. The horse that I'm going to go with is obviously number two, Bad Attitude. Yes, he is coming up in class. He's gone from a 46 right up to a 56 now, but he's decent. The source I know, Manuel Nunes. I, I also saw an interview of his yeah. saying that he really rates the source. Bad Attitude. That was a great win last time when he beat Crazy Vision. I think he'll probably pull this off obviously the draw is a bit of a factor but he does come from off the pace does uh, bad attitude so he just keeps impressing me this horse i think i'm going to put him in as my first choice 
Yeah, I'm actually going to go with um, Chitsit Kamadans. Yeah, he was disappointed last time. But the way that I see this race pans out, I think he'll be in the block seat with that uh, barrier one. Um, if he kicks on nicely with the blinkers this time, I hope um, Chitsit Kamadans can give that winner to Jean-Michel and Selig. Like you said, bad attitude. He absolutely flew home on the inside of Crazy Vision last time. He probably won't be getting the inside run tomorrow with the barrier seven. But I'm sure he's going to be right there. He's just a change horse this season, to be honest with you. And then for third redline captain, he's such a genuine performer. He goes to benchmark 56 now but he should be there or thereabouts once again yeah well he's running a 61 when he ran behind that was al shiba uh like you say model consistency you know when if you put a couple of rupees on red line captain you know you're going to get a run for your money he's ultra consistent have a look at the horses he's run behind perplexing he's he's beaten al shiba he's run behind al shiba uh, he's got some very very good form and i don't think he's gonna have a problem in the 56 especially with 57 kilos on his back and uh most likely to lead you or king's well i suppose king's county the stable companion so uh, i would imagine red line captain is going to go off in lead yeah that's right it's, it's an open race actually because even act of loyalty has got a chance in there so tough race yeah all right Okay, the Guinness Gajada Cup. It's a 1400 benchmark 71. Unfortunately, no Al Mariachi. I was surprised. Yeah. I mean, I, I really thought that this race would really suit him. Uh, I don't know if maybe something went wrong with him or, or, or for whatever reason they decided not to run him. Maybe there's a race for him next week. Let's have a let's wait and see. Uh, I'm, oh, this is my value bet, Parapalis. He let me down badly last time. Um, he, he for some reason they changed the tactics. I'm, as far as I'm concerned, he's drawn six. He's got 56 on, uh, on his back. I think if he jumps and leads again, and I've looked at the field, uh, he, I mean, Waltag, uh, do you think he's quicker than Waltag? I think he's quicker than Waltag. I know Waltag is going to be drawn on his inside, but Waltag doesn't really have to lead. Yeah. I think if Parapalas goes off to, to lead, <coughs> excuse me, I think he's going to be quite a hard nut to crack. He's run behind White River. He absolutely thrashed Chile con Carney. And then last time, I just don't think those tactics suited him and, and uh, I'm expecting a much better run. I think he's trading around 700, 600 rupees. So he will be my value bet for the afternoon in the feature race. Shahil, I don't know what you think about Parapalas. Do you agree with me or are you going somewhere else? Obviously, I will be going with my, my pick uh, of the week. Uh, number six, Walt. Uh, great run in the winter stakes last time. We did not expect him to stay at 1850. He did that. Um, he proved that he's a genuine performer too. Um, he definitely appreciated the drop back to the 1400 now. He's been freshened up. I see they sent him to Florial and he's been back to Portly only this week. He looks great at track work. Um, he's a beautiful chestnut by horse chestnut. It. So I'm going to go with Waldeg um, to beat Kazar actually. Kazar has been working tremendously well from that um, last third to Black Cat back. I think he barrier trial two weeks ago when you commented on that. If he cannot overcome that 10th barrier, he'll be right there, Kazar. And then Captain Swarovski, I don't know if they've preferred him to Al Mariachi, but that was an eye-catching run last time when he finished third to Opera Royale. So my traffic tag would be Waldeg, Kazar and Captain Swarovski. <coughs> okay, thanks, Shahil. Yeah, Kazar has definitely uh, he improved nicely with those blinkers in the barrier trial. Unfortunately, he's pulled a terrible draw. He's going to be drawn 9 out of 10. And I do agree with uh, uh, Shahil about Captain Swarovski. There was an eye-catching performance behind Opera Royale, but he got beat 7.5 lengths by Pera Palace. I think Pera Palace this time is going to be, if they adopt the same tactic that, that they did when he won, he could be a tough little nut to crack. I, I really rate this horse, Pera Palace. I think he's a, he's a top little horse. And uh, if he gets out to the front, I think he's going to be quite hard to catch, and I think he's going to beat your wall tag tomorrow. Yeah. Right, race 7, 990, benchmark 31, never easy with the 990s. And another horse that we spotted in training, and what I said on Wednesday, I said, if this horse gets a draw, he'll be unbeatable in my opinion. Unfortunately, he's drawn 10 out of 10. Well, he'll be drawn 9 now, because the emergency acceptor was drawn 7. So he jumps from draw 9. Remember last time he jumped from the 10 draw, and that was a terrific run to Vision of Trust. He's, run, he's got some good 990 form this horse. He's run behind AP Strike, who was once again very, very unlucky uh, last week. So that form has stood up pretty well. I just think he's way better than this field. Obviously, the draw is a factor, but uh, I think despite the draw, he should win. Yeah, and this is exactly what I wrote. Not the best of fields <laughs> and a banker if he overcomes the draw. Let's see how Olivier Placé will. Ha he must have some kind of game plan in his hand. And I'm sure um, Roman Dancer is going to be finally fourth time lucky.
Yeah, yeah, he's got some, um, sorry, he had some brilliant two-year-old form this was. Yes. He came here as a two-time winner from four starts. Yeah. Uh, he's just had a little bit of luck, I mean bad luck, especially with draws. He's never had a draw this was. Yeah. His best draw is seven, uh, and that was in the 1400. But um, obviously, uh, like you say, Olivier Place, he's no mug. He knows the yeah. track very well. He'll go into the race with a game plan, and I just feel that he's, um, the only thing that can beat him is obviously uh, is bad luck, yeah. uh, as far as I'm concerned. He's just going to need a little bit of luck from that draw. Right, the, the, the dangers. I went back and had a look at um, a run of Northern Rebel last year, 24th of, of, of November, when he ran just behind Maximo. We've seen what he's done. Yeah. That, uh, that is over the 990. Uh, he does sort of get slow away, which costs him his races, especially in the 990. But uh, once again, not a bad run behind AP Strike last time. If he jumps more or less on terms and he's in touch, he must have a chance. And then the newcomer, Wendell. Uh, some nice barrier trial. He won over 1,000 metres in South Africa. Some good barrier work as well. So Nice draw, at least for him. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, he's got a, a good draw. He's got some good speed, the source. I, I, I'm expecting a good run from him. But it's, it's, not, a, it's not a strong race. I think the favourite should pull it off. Yeah, and, and I'd like to add in number seven, Goldenstern. Um, he's been better drawn than last time when he was drawn 11. He did finish right behind a Roman Dancer on the Latter's debut. He's drawn three tomorrow, so we we'll probably can run into quarter or top three. Okay. All right, let's finish off with the eighth, the lucky last 1500 metre, once again a 0 25. Uh, seven silver, that was a cracking run behind Paddington's luck last time. He's drawn one. He only got beat half a length. In fact, his form before that wasn't too bad behind Master of Spain and Mr. Hardy. These are decent horses. And in a 0 25, you should think that maybe seven silver. He's had the three runs. He looks like he's ready to crack his first win. Yeah, that's right. Like you said, great race last time out. He was caught wide from the back stretch and he was forced even wider when he turned in for home and still managed to run a cracking race on the half a length behind Paddington's luck. Drawn one tomorrow. Um, I'm sure Seven Silver can, can get his win. Yeah, I think he's going to be quite a tough nut to crack in the last race. The danger, Shahil? New Golden Age, probably um, cracking run, run a blinder against Red in the last time out. If he reproduces that the same run, he'll be right there. Yeah, New Golden Age has been another horse that's put, has been always flashing up late. Been unlucky. Good run behind Red Indy last time. He's going to be drawn six now with that emergency acceptor coming out. Kirsty Ramsam, he's, he's riding well. Uh, you got to respect him. And then what about Fortissimo? I suppose uh, you got to respect him, although he did win in a 0 20 last time. But uh, he looks like he's sort of, even though he's eight years old now, he's sort of got a new lease on life ever since he's dropped down to these sort of divisions. But it's not a horse I would trust, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I personally think Seven Silver, the, the younger horse, he's just turned four. I think he's going to be too good for them. Absolutely. And probably Cali's champ for to, to complete the quad at them because he's run a good race behind Red Indy last time. Yeah. So Cali's champ, also an improving horse yeah okay well that's a wrap from myself and jahil uh well actually no we're gonna it's not a wrap yet sorry we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna put we're gonna put uh, our heads on the block what's your banker shale um roman dancer only has to be the draw i believe yeah i, I agree uh, roman dance and i also i think captain gonwell is going to take a lot of beating my value bet is para palace at 700 rupees your value bet was probably sanatla Sonatla. Okay, there we go. Well, that's our bankers and value bets. Remember, we are live on air tonight. Was our radio. We will be back on Wednesday with uh, Jeu de Gallo, where we're going to talk about this meeting. A couple of barrier trials, some workouts, and that sort of thing. Our normal Wednesday show. Thank you very much for joining us. Catch up with you tonight and next week, Wednesday. Thank you. Goodbye.